Day hiking is a gateway drug to happiness. And if that's the kind of thing that you wanna dabble in, well, this video is for you. <laughs> Whoops. What kind of video am I making here? Typically, I spend a lot of time talking about backpacking, but I do want to address that day hiking is one of the best ways to get outside and explore our wonderful world. So today on the channel, I'm going to be breaking down the essentials of day hiking. I want to encourage people to get outside wherever they're at, whatever their physical capabilities are, and day hiking is one of the best ways to do it. It's inexpensive, it can be done simply, you don't need a whole lot of planning involved, and it's just a great way to get outside, get vitamin D, and explore the world that's around you. Today, I wanna to break down some of the things that I take with me on day hiking trips. The first essential of day hiking is yourself, is having a willing spirit and a curiosity to go outside. It's amazing because you really don't need much. You can day hike with pretty much just yourself and nothing else. But uh, there are some safety things that I do want to talk about. So I'm going to be adding in some gear and some things that I think really are going to make day hiking not only safe, but uh, a fun and enjoyable experience for you. So first, let's talk about pack. A day hiking pack can be very simple. This is the Cooley 20 from Mystery Ranch. For those of you who don't know, the name of a pack plus the number that comes after it is typically referencing the liter capacity or how much a backpack holds. So this is a 20 liter pack. The Cooley 20 is a 20 liter pack. Generally speaking, you don't really need much more than this for simple day hikes. I wanna give a shout out and a thank you to Mystery Ranch. They are a sponsor of Backpacking TV and have been a patron here for a long time. Helped make a lot of videos possible. Mystery Ranch makes amazing backpacks. Whether you are in it for day hiking, backpacking, hunting, whatever it may be, check out mysteryranch.com and they have got what you need. The 20 liter pack is a great size starter pack for day hiking because it pretty much will hold everything that you're gonna need. Day hiking is amazing because it doesn't require a major investment. However, I do think that if you're going to be hiking for more than two, three, four miles, it's worth getting a good pair of hiking shoes because what will really happen is you'll develop blisters or potentially expose yourself to foot injuries by not having good footwear. You know, you can get a very simple hiking shoe. I really like hiking in just a low cut, kind of sneaker tennis shoe style. These are from Merrill and these are just a really simple lightweight hiking shoe. They don't have to cost a ton. And I do have a whole wall of footwear behind me. And for day hiking mostly, unless you're gonna be hiking in really wet, boggy conditions, a shoe like this is completely fine. I don't actually really like doing casual hiking in big boots. They tend to wear down your feet a little bit more. They can be harder to get accustomed to. And unless the conditions really call for it, this is my go-to. Now, one other thing that comes with day hiking or hiking in general is having a good pair of socks. I cannot emphasize enough how much I encourage people to not hike in cotton socks. Get a good pair of wool socks or synthetic socks that are made for hiking. Cotton socks are notoriously bad for moisture management, and it's really easy to just get blisters and have some foot pain with cotton socks. So when your feet sweat in cotton socks, that moisture is going to stay right on your skin, which leads to blisters and uncomfortability and can lead to foot injuries. And these are just way more comfortable to hike in. They are, they can be a bit of an investment at like $15 for a single pair of socks, but trust me, I love it. So if you can, don't wear cotton socks because this is just way better. Next, let's talk about water. Water is obviously an essential element and bringing enough water is critical. So pretty much on any hike, you gotta have at least a liter of water. Now it does depend on where you're going, what the objective of the day is, how much water exists in the terrain that you're going to be hiking in that may factor in if you should bring more. One of the biggest problems that people run into in the outdoors where maybe search and rescues or rangers are called in for help, it's because people are taking hiking trips with insufficient amounts of water. Just having one of those little plastic water bottles that you can get at a convenience store, it's not enough. You need at least a liter to be safe. Now, I also like to carry some sort of other backup, which is probably like a second liter 
And this is actually a water filter. This is from Grail. It's a really simple water filter that you can scoop up water on the go. It's actually a purifier, not a filter. And it allows you to contain another liter of water and have the ability to scoop and filter water on the trail. So make sure that you are prepared with sufficient amounts of water. And it's probably a good idea if you're gonna be out for longer than a few hours to have some way to treat additional water to keep you going if you end up staying out longer than you anticipate. Now let's also talk about nutrition. It is really important to make sure that you have some nutrition with you. I like to bring things like Cliff Bars, um, Trail Mix, always a classic, dried fruit. I like apricots and mangoes, a personal favorite of mine. But things like that that are going to give you some sugars and as well as some uh, carbohydrates that are going to be great for keeping your body fueled for multiple miles on the trail. So it's always a good idea to have trail snacks with you. Now, one of the times that I personally have gotten in trouble was I was on a day hike that uh, I thought was only going to be a few miles long, so I didn't bring any snacks. Ended up having a major day out on the trail, did about 16 miles, didn't have trail snacks, and it got very weird at the end of the day. I started getting loopy. I started getting what is known as hyponatremia, which is basically drinking too much water and not having proper balance of sodium and electrolytes in the body. And so make sure that you bring some snacks with yourself to not only just enjoy the hike and feel strong and get your miles in, but it's a good safety piece as well. Speaking of some additional safety pieces, that's just a great idea to have with you. I think that it's pretty critical and necessary to have some sort of windbreaker or rain jacket with you at all times. Now, these don't have to be crazy expensive rain jackets, but something that will protect you mostly from wind, of course, and precipitation, whether it's in the form of rain or snow or sleet, is, I think, a really important idea. And I take this with me even when I'm hiking in the desert. The desert can be an extreme place and temperatures swing rapidly, weather can change, and it's always a good idea to have a light jacket or a windbreaker with you no matter what. And on the same front, I also like to take a puffy jacket with me. It doesn't have to be a super heavy duty puffy jacket, but it's a great idea to have some extra insulation. Now, the reason why I really think that having some extra insulation is important is because things can obviously go wrong. The weather can shift dramatically. You can twist an ankle or, you know, have something that necessitates a longer hike or a longer time outside than you anticipate. And staying warm is super important. Fun fact that's kind of actually not so fun is that the majority of rescues and emergency situations that people get into are actually in the summertime, not the winter time because in the winter, people are prepared with cold weather clothes. And in the summertime, people just go hiking in t-shirts and then the weather changes or they get lost or something happens and they don't have anything with them and that can lead to some problems. So bring some things with you that will help, some thermal layers, so down jackets are great for this. Having something like a long sleeve shirt or something like a, a lightweight uh, layer is great and of course a rain jacket. Let's start putting these things inside the old backpack. Another safety piece that I think is important to have, it's maybe not quite a day hiking essential, but it is like a good idea to bring with you in case again, something goes wrong. Having a good headlamp is, I always think it's a good idea to throw a simple little headlamp into your backpack and just have it with you as a backup. Some of these headlamps don't have to be expensive. You can get one for, you know, as cheap as like $15 even, but having some way to illuminate the trail or navigate at dusk is just important. If you go out for a sunset hike, being able to get back to your car after dark, obviously pretty important. So great to have, it's, you know, makes you safer on the trail, especially hiking in the dark can be 
precarious situation. So I like to bring a headlamp with me. A couple more safety pieces that I like to have with me is sun protection. That's going to look like having sunscreen, sunglasses, hiking hat, the ability to just keep sun off of your skin. So I like to hike with a long sleeve shirt even in the summertime because you can cover yourself in case that you've just getting too much sun. So sunscreen is obviously great, but sometimes I just like having physical barriers like a long sleeve uh, that obviously doubles up when it gets cooler as well. But so bring some sunglasses, bring some sun cream, sunblock, um, all of those things are quite important. Can be a good idea to bring a first aid kit with you. Some people will always have a first aid kit with you and it's pretty much a good idea, even if it's just for blister care. Blister care is one of the most important and common injuries, if you will, uh, to take care of in the backcountry. Just having the ability to pop a blister, treat it, um, or keep a blister from forming in the first place with moleskin. So it's a good idea to have some sort of first aid kit with you. Not quite an essential essential, but I think again, uh, some of these things are just good ideas to have. I like to have some sort of little pocket knife or utility knife or a little Leatherman or something like that, just in case you need to, you know, sometimes it's usually just like opening a package <laughs> or something like that, but it can be handy in, in a pinch for various reasons. And I just kind of like to have it with me, whittle a stick or something like that. So, you know, maybe bring a knife consider it at least. Now, the last thing on my list for day hiking essentials is having some way to navigate. Now, the most common way to navigate currently is just a phone. Now, there's many good trail apps, Onyx, Gaia, Keltopo that are great to use, all trails, and that's very common. And for most day hikes, I think that that is perfectly fine. Now, I do want to address that at least there are people out there and I can see where they're coming from that say that a phone is not enough and you should have something analog like a compass and a map, a paper map. That's a good idea and it depends on where you're hiking. You know, if you're going to be even day hiking, let's say you're going into a remote part of Colorado or something like that, then yeah it's probably a good idea to have that. However, if you're just doing a simple trail in a state park that's you know never far away from sort of help or anything like that, and you know you're gonna have cell phone reception, I am under the impression that at least cell phone is gonna be the most common way to navigate, and that's what most people are gonna be doing these days. However, batteries can die, and you know, things can happen and it's great to have a backup. So uh, having a compass and a paper map is always a good idea, but just navigation in general is smart to be aware of and to consider for your day hike. Now, there are some diehards out there who will say that well, I've got to talk about a survival kit or some sort of survival blanket or something like that. And, you know, I do want to address it that there's going to be people out there who think that every day hiking bag should be outfitted with a space blanket or some sort of emergency blanket. And to be fair, that's a great idea. However, the amount of times that I have gone day hiking with one or backpacked with a space blanket is a grand total of zero times. And I think that you can get out there and, you know, as long as you're conscious, as long as you're trying to be safe and are aware of some of the risks that you're taking, um, that decision is up to you. Do you have to take a space blanket? No. Uh, is it a good idea as a backup? Sure. Um, and it's just depending on your um, level of comfort with the wilderness, um, that may or may not be a really good idea for you to take. For me personally, one more day hiking essential is bringing a camera. I am a photographer. I really like having a camera with me, but there is something beautiful about just going and being, you know, this pack weighs six pounds with water. And, uh, you know, it's kind of nice to just be able to hoist a light pack upon your shoulders, John Muir style, hop over the fence, go for a hike and enjoy. So my friends, those are the day hiking essentials. I hope that this was helpful and informative to you. If you have any questions about day hiking or are looking to get into backpacking, I have a whole lot of videos about hiking and backpacking. 
All right, that's it for me, my friends. I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you later. Time to go hit the trails. <laughs>